NTT IndyCar Series rookie Santino Ferrucci, who is driving like anything but a rookie. You've had a great success rate this season. For fourth place tied your uh, season best last week at Pocono. I would think that uh, you feel pretty good about this practice session. Yeah, you know, it's all about momentum, and uh, I feel like we've been doing a really good job, especially in the ovals lately, and, uh, you know, it makes a difference, especially coming down to the end of the championship for us to win the rookie title and obviously come into the top ten of points. So, uh, you know, just keep staying on our game, stay consistent, and uh, doing what we can do. Also joined by Team Penske's Joseph Newgarden, the series points leader and the best uh, first pitcher we've seen all week. Good, uh, A good throw there last night. Yeah, thank goodness. Um, why don't they let you warm up? Like, it's just kind of cruel, actually. Like, hey, you get to do this really cool thing, but um, you got to wing it right off the start. So, no, it was great. We had um, we had a really fun time. Actually, got to stay for most of the most of the game, and um, it was an interesting game. There was a you know a guy ran on the field. There was a fight. There was a you know a couple home runs. So it was like a really good ball game. It's a good night for for baseball. But um, yeah, we had fun. It was great cross promotion. You know, I thought there was a lot of fans there that um, you know came up and said they were really excited about the race here. So you know, it's great to see uh, sports crossover. You got you got guys that love baseball and um, and motorsports. So hopefully, we get a lot of people out tomorrow night. And I think you know everyone here at uh, uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway has, has done a great job of, of promoting this event. And um, it's something I think everyone looks forward to. It really has a good reputation, which is what you want when you come to racetracks, is to feel. You know, positive about what the event is and the track itself, and you know, being excited to drive it. You get that here, so I think it's a it's been a great addition to our calendar the last three years. We'll come back to Joseph and Santino in a minute. We're joined also by Marcus Erickson, a first timer at this racetrack. Aero Schmidt, Peterson Motorsports. Marcus, did you expect to be second right out of the box? Uh, I don't know what I expected. I think you know, coming here for the second time, I was here actually a month ago. Did did a test. Uh, I knew that you know. Every track I've been to this year prior to an event, we, we've been right after. So I was expecting us to be competitive, and, but still, you know, it's only practice one. So we, we will see in qualifying where we were in stands. But for sure, the car was, was really, really good to drive, and uh, I thought the driving was really good as well. So the ROSPM guys have done a great job so far. Well, that's been made of Santino's first season. It's been really strong, especially in ovals, but you've been pretty strong yourself. Is it uh, the ovals been surprising how strong it's been? Uh, yeah, I mean, I went into the season with no experience on, on ovals and you know didn't know what to expect but it's been I, I felt really comfortable straight away and you know uh, the guys you know again on the RSPM team has really helped me to get up to speed get comfortable and giving me a very nice car to drive unfortunately be, there have been a couple of mistakes uh, from my side when we've had some really good runs like the, the 500 and, and Iowa which has sort of if you only look at the results I think our oval record is maybe not that great I think the actual pace uh, we've shown has been really really strong so that's what I've been saying, you know, hopefully we can piece a, a whole weekend together and really get a good result out of it. Uh, I think uh, that would be nice and I think uh, we have the possibility to, uh, this weekend. Joseph, you won here in 2017. Uh, this has to be a place where you think in this championship stretch that uh, you've got circled. Pretty highlight place of the three left. Well, I hope they're all three good. You know, they, they need to be. It's uh, If we're just good here and so-so everywhere else, I think it's going to be tough, uh, especially with double points at Laguna. So, yeah, it can't just be here. I, I think we, we've got to be on it for the last three races. Um, just the way this championship is run, you just can't you can't get comfortable. And I think it's hard to points race, um, you know, at least completely points race. You, you've got to kind of do your thing still and, and keep trying to maximize the result every weekend. But I do feel positive about here. Uh, you know, last year we had a bit of a bobble with the new arrow kit introduction. We didn't roll off great, and it was just kind of a fight to, to get where we were last year. Um, and then you throw in the rain with a lack of time, and I, I just don't think we hit it perfectly off the box. But um, today, uh, the, the car was stellar, right, right out of the piss the first time. I was like, man, that, I'm happy with this. Felt a lot more like 2017. And I think we've got it in a really good window. Now we can just kind of fine tune it. We'll see what race running you know, brings this evening. I think that'll be another, another challenge. But um, at least for qualifying, I think we'll have a good car to go up and challenge everybody. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel confident. I think we've got something to fight for this weekend with, with PPG and Chevrolet. Okay, I've got the only extra mic, so I'll, I'll make the way around the room. Sorry for stepping in front. We'll go to Bruce over here on your driver's right. Joseph, in spite of what you just said about you've got to be good here, you've got to be good everywhere from here to the end, don't you think you've kind of put your 
championship competitors in a situation where they kind of have to win out in order to catch you? Well, they definitely don't have to win out. That's no. I mean, you, you but they've know, got to win. they've got to win over uh, these three. Not necessarily. I mean, if I finish 15th and Rossi finishes third, you know, and you do that a couple races in a row, we're pretty much like neck and neck going into Laguna. And Laguna, I mean, you could have a 60-point lead going into Laguna, and you still have to have a pretty good day. Like, you you know, you don't have to, you can't walk the thing. Like, you, you have to be, I don't, I don't know, you probably probably could have finished 11th or 10th, which is still hard. Like, it's not easy to show up and finish in that spot. Um, so I just, you know, to me it's still wide open, be, mainly because of double points, you know. I. I don't love it because uh, it's it's tough that it puts that much emphasis on a season finale. But you know we all know the score going into the season. We know how the game works. So I think you've got to play to how the championship is laid out. And yeah, it just doesn't matter unless you have a hundred point lead. You're not going to be comfy going into the finale. Plus, Laguna's a track where many of you haven't run. Yeah, it's an oddball. I mean, we don't know what that's going to bring. We could be terrible there. You know, and if we're scrapping to finish tenth, and we've got a 40, 50 point lead, like that's not enough. So it's just. You know, it's funny this points discussion, but it is super close in my opinion still amongst everybody. And by the way, the top eight in this session, uh, 0.16 separation, so very close. Right here in front from Woke. Okay. Uh, two again. One and a half. Okay. Uh, one for you, Santino, first. Shortly before the uh, practice was over, you said to the interviewer, the team gave you a stable car. Does it mean there are no major changes for qualifying? No, I mean, I think being a rookie, Marcus will probably agree, the worst thing you want to have is a car that you have to consistently work and fight. I mean, for someone like Joseph, it's probably a lot less of a task because he knows the tracks and he knows what's going to happen. But for us to, to learn and to, to build confidence, you need to have something where the rear is really secure and you have the ability to push in the corners. And obviously going into qualifying, you take a little bit more risk, you change the aero balance a, a touch, but I mean, we're not going to sit here and make a spring change now or a rocker change or nothing major. I mean, you're looking at a half a turn of front wing at the most and go in and qualify the car and see where you end up. I have a question for you, Marcus. <clears throat> when you make the switch from F1 to IndyCar, you know that ovals were part of the racing calendar. How did you prepare before the season when you've never been on ovals before? Watch a lot of videos, spoke to a lot of drivers, mainly, you know, my teammates in, in James and Robbie and, and Jack, and that was, you know, very helpful. But in, in the end of the day, I think ovals being so different from anything else, you just have to get out there and drive. So every oval, every test, every race, it's just been a learning process. I feel more and more comfortable. And, but to be honest, you know, I, I really liked it from the start. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I would hate it or love it or whatever. But I, I really enjoy it, and, you know, I have so much fun out on every what we've been to so far and the racing is just amazing you know to be in them speeds and fights and you know you need to calculate with the with the slip streams and everything and the timing is just a very different type of racing which i think or i find very very fun and also you know to watch the races after you know it's, it's a lot of action going on so i i really find find it a lot of fun question here on driver's right Seth, you know, of course, after what happened at Polk, you know, the Rookie of the Year battle has been cut down. What are your mindset going into that as far as what it will take to take down Felix? Of course, double points bear in mind. Yeah, I think, you know, Felix is kind of in a similar situation as me at Ganassi. He has a really experienced teammate in Scott, like I have in Sebastian. And, you know, it's going to come down to consistency and being on your game. I mean, you can't. Like for us, you know, finishing in the top ten is good as a rookie. It's tough to fight for top fives and wins, and you know, it's not something that you really expect out of your first season. And for me, I just, you know, I keep going off of the completing laps. You know, I'm not really looking forward into Portland or Laguna. You know, I know the car is going to be somewhat decent, if not really good. And you know, I just want to take one race at a time and focus on what's at hand and go from there. Again, far right on the question. First one for Marcus. Uh, given the recent developments with the team, do you expect to still either be with the current team or still in IndyCar next year full time? I don't know, to be honest. I think, you know, these final races is very important for me. I think, as far as I know, the team has not made any decisions uh, on the drive line lineup. So, you know, it's, it's all very important now for me to, to really show what I can do on the track. Uh, every every chance I get to go out on the track is an opportunity for me to show what I can do. 
So yeah, it's really that's that's all you know all I know. But for me and you know my goal and my desire is to be in IndyCar next year, 100%. I love the series, I love the racing, and I want to be here for a long time. So that's my goal. But for sure, these last three races is going to be very very important for me. And for Santino. Um, given how your tenure in Europe went, when you first came here in IndyCar, do you feel like you're kind of under the microscope where people are waiting for you to, to slip up? Do you feel pressure to not do something that would give them ammo to, to turn on you, basically? No. I mean, I, I'm comfortable here. This is my home, basically, as much as I've raced in Europe. And I know Joseph and, obviously, Marcus raced in Europe for most of his career. But now coming back, it's more of, a personal challenge more than anything to show that you know you can drive a race car and you can drive it fast and uh, I've also just been enjoying myself you know I've been more myself and more open I, I've had a lot more fun being back stateside than I ever had in Europe and uh, that's quite frankly the reason why I got into motorsports and into racing so uh, no I, I very much love uh, love this year and love everything that's happened. And some of the criticism hasn't been so much about your drive people know that you can drive and you're validating um, that expectation that you can come here and contend for wins. But a lot of the criticism has been behavioral stuff. Do you feel like you owe anyone an apology or do you feel like you regret anything that happened while in Europe? Nope. I mean, obviously you're in a different place mentally. Nothing you can do about it. You're under a super high stress microscope from Formula One, which is obviously a pinnacle of that motorsport. But come here and get to be yourself. You know, you don't have. I don't feel any of that pressure, or any of that, and you know, I, I, quite frankly, you know, this is like a family to me. These guys are, you know, been great to me all year long, and I don't feel like anyone's really judged me coming back home and racing any car. So I feel like we've had a really strong year, and uh, we'll continue to capitalize on that. Gentlemen, thank you. We have qualifying at 6:15. We uh, 5:15 actually local time. We expect to see you here as well.